What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another LEGO YouTube video. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the LEGO Harry Potter Gringotts Wizarding Bank set. It's of course detailed with the Ukrainian Iron Belly, as well as the front of Gringotts detailed on the front of the box here. And then this is divided into two sections, the bottom holding the vaults. And the set does come with 4,803 pieces, and it comes with 13 minifigures inside of the set, and retails for $430 in the United States. The back of the box has a few details showing the interior of the Gringotts Wizarding Bank, and then off to the side we're able to see it connected with the Diagon Alley set, as well as some scenes from the actual Harry Potter movies, and there's some more details featuring the bottom section of the set with the vaults and the Ukrainian Iron Belly, so let's go ahead and unbox it and see what's inside of here. There are, of course, 31 numbered bags to complete this set from start to finish, and there are four instruction booklets included inside as well, and as per standard with the kind of UCS sets, there's some cool facts inside of the instruction booklets detailing the set, as well as the design process, and here we are able to see a picture of the five designers involved with this set. We also get a picture of Gringotts connected with Diagon Alley, which looks really cool and definitely is something we'll do in this video, and then we can also see it off to the side here showing off how tall the set is once it is completed. So beginning with the build process here, you actually do start the first half of the instructions gets you the cavern part of the build, and you also get to build the Ukrainian iron belly. And the building process for the kind of mines and the vault area is definitely a lot of fun. I feel like the vault area gets a lot more hate than it should definitely should have been a separate set. I do agree with the point that it could have, it feels, it just feels like a cash grab that they kind of force you to buy both the mines and the actual bank together to kind of drive up the price a lot. I think it would have been a lot better if these were two separate sets. I still would have bought both, I think, but it would have been cool to get a cheaper Gringotts option. But the actual build for this was a lot of fun. It reminded me a lot of the Stranger Things Upside Down set, which was a lot of fun to build. And I really liked building the railway system with this too. That was a lot of fun. Kind of reminded me of things like a roller coasters. And now we are starting on the second half of the set, which of course is the main attraction here. And the part that everybody actually cares about, which is Gringotts Wizarding Bank. And it's a very unique building process. It's kind of like built at this ankle and they use a lot of interesting building techniques to kind of get these like crooked, crooked pillars established. And it's a very unique build. It reminds me somewhat of Diagon Alley, but I feel like Gringotts is a bit more unique than the buildings in the Diagon Alley set. And here we're taking a small break. So I'll show you guys what we have so far. We're able to see the first floor of Gringotts is finished. And we can also see the first floor of the Magical Menagerie. And there is this nice alleyway towards the side here. The interior of the menagerie is very small and there are some sticker pieces towards the back of the set. We can see the uh, dark mark over to the side here, kind of graffitied on the wall. There's a small archway here and a side entrance to the actual wizarding bank. We're able to see some windows here, which do use some sticker pieces, unfortunately, and there's lots of snot bricks here. And then we do get to finish the first floor interior details, which looks really cool. And here's the Ukrainian iron belly displayed next to it, just to get an idea as to how big the dragon is. Honestly, one of the easiest things to build in the set, but definitely one of my favorites was the Ukrainian iron belly, a really fun build there and the actual the entire build from start to finish I feel like with this set is just very amazing I love all of the building techniques I love the snot brick uh, techniques that they use with all of the white tiles here and it is a very fun build I was watching the Deathly Hallows movies while building it and the building experience is definitely a huge reason as to why I like this set so much and now here is the finished Gringotts Bank and I have to say this is probably one of the most impressive looking Lego Harry Potter sets in my collection. One thing that surprised me a lot with this set is just how tall it is. I feel like I never really got an idea as to how big this set would be until I finished it. I wasn't expecting a Daily Bugle and Avengers Tower type Lego set with this, but that's definitely what this is, and it does look really cool. It's very easy to detach the two uh, parts of the set too. The Gringotts Bank just kind of rests on top of the actual cavern section of it, and here are the two sections side by side, and the first one we'll look at today are the actual vault area and it's a very interesting build there's this minecart which actually allows you to traverse these sections of it And then there's also this cool play feature where you can move these Technic pins up and they kind of act as little stops so that the minecart can stop at each individual vault Vault 687. And the first vault we'll take a look at is Vault 687. There is a sticker piece detailing the front of the vault door, and then we're also able to see a lantern towards the side of the vault. You're able to easily open it as it is just set on a hinge, and inside is the Sorcerer's Stone. 
And then the next vault is Vault 713, which is Harry's vault. And inside, we're able to see all of his gold. And then right next to his vault, we are able to see the Thieves' Downfall, which, of course, washes away any enchantments of any wannabe robbers. And here we can see the Thieves' Downfall has definitely worked on Ron and Hermione here. And then below this, we're able to see the feeding schedule of the Ukrainian Iron Belly. And unfortunately for our Gringotts Goblin, it is past feeding time. And speaking of the Ukrainian Iron Belly, it's actually one of my favorite parts of this set. I love the detail with the wings here, they're actually able to fold in too, and the posability with the dragon is so cool, and I love how they have several sticker elements detailing it too. You're able to move the tail around too, and there's various spikes on it too, and what I really like is the detailed head mold for this. It is exclusive to the set, there's also these cloth pieces used to detail the wings of the Ukrainian Iron Belly, and there are some handle pieces which actually allow for you to attach Ron, Harry, and Hermione to the back of the Ukrainian Iron Belly, and you can collapse the wings in just like this too, and you can also fold them out again too to create a more aggravated look with the Ukrainian Iron Belly, and then we also do have the kind of golden utensils that they use to control the Iron Belly in the movie, and then we can also see this sticker piece referencing when Gringotts was founded, and there is this really cool tunnel all the way to the bottom here, which of course leads us to the final vault included in the Gringotts Wizarding Bank. The vault number is up Constructed, but we all know it is Bellatrix Lestrange's fault, and it does include Helga Hufflepuff's goblet, which is of course a horcrux, and if you touch it, it actually duplicates just like in the books and movies, which is a very well-executed play feature in my opinion, and you do get tons of these goblets, which you're able to kind of replicate this play feature by sticking all of them inside of this hole like so, and when you tap the goblet, it of course makes all of the goblets duplicate. And I really like the mines, I love the stalagmite and the stalactite found throughout of it and the rock features are also very well put together too and it's a very nice looking display piece. I don't think the kind of caverns area gets enough credit as it should. We also have these tiles up here which allow you to secure the top section of Gringotts to the bottom here. It's kind of just snaps in here. It's just supported by gravity but it is very secure so let's go ahead and take a look at the main attraction here which is of course Gringotts. I haven't any money. Well there's your money Harry. Gringotts, the wizard bank. Take no safer place, not one, except perhaps Hogwarts. And as you can see here, Gringotts is very accurate to its actual source material. What I really like that they were able to replicate is kind of the crooked and kind of imperfections that they have with the Gringotts bank. And I don't like the sticker piece towards the front though. That's one of my kind of nitpicks with this set, but I do think the exterior of the bank is very well executed. I love the window details as well as all of the white tiles that we see on the side of it. There's some sticker pieces representing some windows here. Towards the side, we're able to see an advertisement for pumpkin juice and there is this drain pipe down here and then we can also see some owls as well as a daily prophet newspaper saying the boy who lied and then we're able to see a side entrance to Gringotts which we can see on the interior here and then we're also able to see some sticker elements in this kind of alleyway some showing Harry as undesirable number one and then we are also able to see the dark mark on the other side here and here is the entrance to that kind of alleyway over here and then we can also see the now completed side entrance that we showed earlier there's a few other other objects in the little outside of Gringotts we're able to see some Technic pins which allows us to connect to some other modular buildings and I really do like the kind of cobbled path leading up to Gringotts Bank very similar to the Diagon Alley one and then here we have the Magical Menagerie side building which looks very detailed. What I really like about the front of this is the kind of advertisement for Gringotts that says multiply your fortune with a junior wizard savings account. There's some other signage too and there are some pets towards the front of the store and there is an alleyway over here which leads to the back of the menagerie which has this nice sticker piece advertising fang brushes. We're able to see more of these undesirable number one posters as well as a chocolate frog and then you can see brews and stews over here and you can reveal the interior of the magical menagerie which is very tight and compact but there are a few details inside of it. The side of it does look really cool too. I like the kind of weathered look that they have going on here and I like the goblin peeking through the window of the side of Gringotts. We're able to see some more windows here too and that pretty much does it for the exterior of the bank so let's go ahead and take a look at the interior of it. You're able to get a better look at it by removing the roof here and what's really cool with the roof is there's actually some broken glass which leads 
entrance into the lobby here, and you can also see another room at the very top here, which has a few sticker pieces inside of it, and I think it's a really nice little compartment here. I'm going to be honest, I mainly use it to store the three coins included here, so I just kind of stuff those in there like a little piggy bank. We're also able to see some references to the original Harry Potter Goblin, and then you can see several other sticker pieces on the top floor of the Gringotts Bank, including some gold and a treasure chest. There's also a bat on the window here, and then there is a chandelier overlooking, of course, the first floor of the Gringotts Bank, which has these really cool kind of holographic windows windows, and there's some columns here, which are printed pieces, which I thought was pretty cool. And there are, of course, several desks for the goblins who work in the bank to actually do their work at. So very cool interior, though I have to be completely honest, I feel like the interior is definitely not where the set shines. The exterior of the set is definitely my favorite. I think the interior just does not really do as much as it should. We also get a ton of great minifigures inside of the set. My favorites being this kind of burnt up goblin over here. I also really like the Death Eater included, and then I really like the Ron, Hermione, and Harry minifigures, and that sums up our review. So let's go ahead and get Gringotts placed in my LEGO City. And here it is with Diagon Alley and the rest of the LEGO City. I think it fits in very well. It's a nice centerpiece. And here's the display. We've got the Diagon Alley plaque down here next to the mines, of course, which I really like. And we have this on the shelf below Gringotts. And I think I got it to line up very nicely. So it's almost as if it is connected, but it's not. They're on two different shelves. And then we, of course, have the Ukrainian Iron Belly at the very top of the Gringotts Bank, which I think looks very impressive. We're able to see the Daily Profit all the way over here as well as the quality Quidditch shop. We've got the bookstore over here by Diagon Alley. And then the bookstore, of course, connects us to Gringotts Bank. And I think it blends in very nicely. I like the kind of dark green blending in with the dark red and the grays here with Gringotts Bank. I, of course, had to center the Gringotts Bank with Diagon Alley because it is this big centerpiece set. It is the biggest set. So I thought that looks really cool. And then we have Ollivander's right next to it, as well as Scribulus. And then at the very end of the uh, Diagon Alley, we have the entrance to Nocturne Alley. And then we also have Weasley's Wizard Weave. So I think this is a very nice Diagon Alley display. It is now complete now that we have added Gringotts to the display. And I couldn't be happier with this set. I think it integrates very nicely with my LEGO collection over here. And it's probably one of my favorite LEGO Harry Potter sets that I do have collection, though. To be fair, I don't have a ton of them. But what I really like about Gringotts is how much it stands out amongst everything else. I feel like it really catches your eye when you look at it compared to everything else in the Lego City. So for that, I really like it. Any Lego set that grabs your attention is definitely one that I will recommend. I think this is a fantastic set and it fits in very nicely if you have Diagon Alley or even if you just want to add it to a Lego City. I still think it is a solid option. So definitely let me know down in the comments what you guys think of the Gringotts set. I would give it probably an eight and a half or a nine out of 10. It's not a perfect set, but it definitely is a really good set at that. So Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Definitely let me know what you thought of the video down in the comments. Be sure to leave a like if you did enjoy, and that is all for today. Peace out, y'all. We'll see you in the next one.